Okay, what we have here is a temperature monitor for a simulated temperature sensor uh, built in freeboard.io. What we are doing is simulating a temperature value which we can toggle right here and then visualizing that temperature in a dashboard which is actually receiving this temperature data via a cloud-based um, system. Okay, In this particular example, we're using IBM's Bluemix Cloud to receive data from this IoT sensor, log it, and actually make a few decisions based on the read in temperature data, uh, which incidentally is in a JSON format originally when transmitted from this simulated IoT sensor device and then comes up with an alert based on that threshold temperature which is actually set in some code put together using node red now i'll go through how this particular dashboard works first and then uh, we'll look into what's happening behind the scenes so firstly what we see here is the iot based sensor which you can imagine might be a temperature sensor on a texas instrument sensor tag device and uh, this um, sensor data is going to the cloud uh, in a JSON format and then being processed. Um, the message payload is directly being received by Freeboard and um, being populated inside of a temperature gauge. And in one example, this temperature gauge is receiving um, the data source based on the message payload uh, of a configured um, REST API, which we will discuss uh, when we get into the Bluemix dashboard. What we also see is a time series plot of the temperature data which has been received um, and an alert status. So with that said, let's kind of uh, play with this a little bit. So the response rate is about one second at this time. Increasing the temperature beyond 27 degrees triggers an alert or is supposed to at least let's see if that works yay it does okay going beyond that temperature maintains the alert status but getting back to the reference temperature or the threshold temperature as per the code programmed in using node red leads to a, an erasing of the alert status out there on the top left okay so let's have a look at how this works. So what we have here is my node red flow. Uh, so we have an IBM uh, device, um, which is called an IBM IoT block in node red, which um, essentially is looking for a device with a certain device ID. This is like a MAC address uh, provided um, by means of this particular string. And this string is eventually um, helping IBM's IoT node recognize that it should be receiving JSON data, um, which I currently just visualize in a debug panel, which is on the right that you can only partially see out here for the purpose of debugging. Uh, additionally, there are two functions that are doing some interesting things. The first function is basically creating a global variable of this message and uh, saving it in uh, this public uh, address, which would be in this example, sensor tag 001-pgm mybluemix.net slash and then api slash latest message so if i went into that particular web page and we're going to do that in a moment you would see that i actually see the raw message payload okay now if i go into api slash uh, temperature alert i will see the temperature alert which is either a true or false value, a Boolean, which is set by means of this node red uh, flow. Okay, so let's uh, look at the node red flow that creates the alert. Um, basically, this IoT device is also passing the message payload to the second function, 
which uh, basically is checking if the payload is uh, containing a temperature value greater than 27 and if so it sets a flag of true to this variable temp which is eventually set to this global variable called temperature alert now temp is a json formatted string okay and this string as with the case of the raw message is eventually just passed into a node red block called an http um, input and essentially this creates a rest api which is accessible via the um, url of my device or simulated device slash the uh, path indicated by means of this particular http node all right so uh, simple enough so far this is called uh, out of um, just for the sake of completeness the nodes that are receiving um that, are, that we start with over here are actually called uh, http response nodes or and would actually feature in your output nodes um in your uh, list of possible nodes offered by node red whereas the http node is an input node which is actually on the right hand side of our architecture here one could also create an alert by means of a series of blocks um, which are uh, designed um, using uh, standard node red elements and land up with a status based on a certain temperature um, threshold and you know in this example I use a threshold system um, which is a standard node but the problem over here is that the status is actually displayed just in the um, uh, debug panel so if you want to actually access it via an external dashboard one must export it using export the data we wish to export either the raw message in the JSON format or some specific uh, data in this example a, bi a boolean temperature alert uh, to a certain REST API, um, HTTP REST API uh, link, all right, URL. So with all of that said, now that we have two specific uh, REST APIs to access, um, we just need to go to freeboard.io. In this case, I am on my account. And in my developer console, uh, I will be able to see my temperature monitor which I've actually interactively designed using a series of elements um, and um, I can also see my IOT device itself and essentially if we went into one of these elements on the monitor um, you will see that it is actually a widget which is receiving data from a data source which I actually select in this example, I, I have the temperature alerts um, data source, uh, which is recognized as a JSON formatted string accessible via a URL. And um, that URL is actually set uh, by first defining data sources um, on Freeboard. And this can be done by simply hitting the add button and then saying that you need to expect a JSON formatted string, typing in the URL of your REST API, and um, setting a re certain refresh rate, which I believe must be an integer, uh, but I haven't tried uh, entering uh, doubles or any other uh, decimal values there. So once this is configured, and that's pretty straightforward, uh, you would basically be able to uh, select input sources for any given widget um, using the data source ta um, data source button against the value um, on text and off text um, uh, rows in this particular indicator light widget or uh, under different section headings if you were using a different widget for example if I were using this temperature gauge uh, widget um, the data source only is set at this value um, row. Okay, so quite easy to configure, and in the end of the day, we land up with a nice dashboard um, to visualize temperature data that is quite responsive. In this example, um, every one second to changes in temperature or simulated temperature in this example uh, from an IoT device.
wherein all the back-end work in this particular example uh, back-end work being simply receiving the JSON string and creating an HTTP um, REST API uh, URL um, is being done at um, using Node-RED um, on IBM Bluemix. Well, thanks for watching and I hope this has been useful. Uh, please feel free to post uh, at the bottom of this video um, for any questions uh, and I'll do my best to answer them.